Good morning. Welcome back to Wager Talk TV. This is Puck Time. Joining me today, Dave Koken, Buster Sports here. We have uh, Carmine in the studio uh, producing role today. As uh, unfortunately we've had some issues, but uh, we're going to roll here with the three of us, Dave, uh, Buster, and myself. D- Dave, I'll start with you. How, how was the night last night? Uh, I know you're doing MLB, KBO, and NHL now. Yeah, um, I, overall, I had a great day. Uh, I lost the one hockey game, and boy, it was a really wrong side. I took uh, uh, the Blues, and they they led to nothing, but they were never the right side at any point in the 60 minutes. You guys were right. I was wrong on that game. Fortunately, uh, that lost, but I had uh, three MLB winners, uh, 3-0 and there, and I had an early morning KBO winner uh, to start Thursday. So baseball is really rolling. Best bets are 23-8-1, and which is outstanding. I'm going to have one hockey play today, which I haven't posted yet, but I will after the show. And uh, we'll let everybody know that $69 special you can get the details, Andrew. It's still available, and that is – it's one of the best deals we've ever had here at Wager Talk. Everybody should take advantage of it because I will mention this, and I don't want to jinx myself, but my three <laughs> golf out, my three golf outrights this week, I played three to win the tournament. Day, uh, Shoffley, and Kepka. So I'm, I've got a first and, and a tie for second on my three guys. It's only one day, so there's a long way to go, but that's a good start. Good stuff. I have Kepka as well as a long shot winner here. I'll throw it over to you, Buster. How was the night? I love the jersey, by the way. Love the jersey for obvious uh, reasons. You got the banner in the background. How you doing, buddy? Yeah, I'm, I'm doing well. Uh, like uh, Carmine said, we had a little bit of uh, issues. He gave me a little call saying I wasn't supposed to be on today. He said, uh, need you to fill in. And uh, more than glad to fill in, especially when the uh, Habs are playing tonight, especially when we have a 2-1 victory. I mean, a 2-1 lead in the series. Um, had a good night last night again, three and two. I, uh, I warned everybody about the Columbus. I know everybody's going to say they got lucky, but they were the better team at the end of the day. They outplayed them and it was, uh, it was, well, we'll get into the Columbus game as is on the slate. So we'll talk a little bit more about that, but yeah, uh, one lose. Uh, I've been playing the MLB first halves and they've been pretty good to me because last year and even a little bit this year, the, bull, the bullpens are getting me. I don't know. It's just the way it goes, right? And uh, I, I lost the game yesterday. I had that Zach Gallon, who I really think is going to be good. So people that are betting baseball, I know, Dave, you, you got, you're got you a baseball uh, uh, professional. You know, you're junkie. really a, fall, Jun- a junkie. Junkie is the word. <laughs> junkie. Yeah. That's a, I was trying to look for the word. I always say to Carmen, I'm always kind of stumbling for words sometimes because uh basically you know what i'm a gambler i used to be a bookmaker i'm not really a, a talker so much so uh, i do the best i can but yeah uh that zach gallon i'm telling you i i love that kid i'll be betting him every game and uh unfortunately he uh met a guy yesterday that uh pitched quite well and i, I lost one up in the first half but i mean it's all good yeah but again profit for my customers i'm on an 18 six and one run and as the, Dave was saying, go. I'm now at Sports Memo, so you go over there and uh, you can use Week 69 and uh, grab a package. It's good. Love to see it. It just seems like right now so many people at both websites are rolling, uh, whether it's an NBA, whether it's an MLB, whether it's an NHL. So speaking of which, that uh, that coupon code Dave was saying, Week 69, uh, it's literally less than 7 or 10 bucks a day. Uh, to get seven days of any of us or any other handicapper for $69 using the coupon code WEEK69. A 5% best bet costs $40. You can get seven days for $69. Guys, I don't want to waste any more time because we do have a game uh, really, really, really soon here. Uh, yes, less than an hour's time now. Uh, we have the New York Islanders, the Florida Panthers. This Florida Panthers team was able to escape uh, elimination in their previous game. I'm going to throw it to you here, Buster. One thing that I will say to, to throw it to you, I believe the most disciplined team wins this game. We've seen the penalties be the biggest thing. We've seen like middle of the game, early second period, a lot of bad penalties being taken. What are you thinking here? Um, yeah, I, I agree. As uh, we talked about uh, this game a couple of days ago, the first one, I, I wonder if uh, Joel Quenville watches the show because I said I thought, you know, <laughs> maybe the game's passed him by. Team got the victory. As I had said, I know all you guys were on the Islanders for the series. I do have uh, the Panthers. It's quite pleased. I'll say the same thing as I said the last time. They need to open it up. They need to play better. They need to stay out of the penalty box because the Islanders' power play looks like they're putting in some goals. 
there's no doubt watching. Like, I missed it. The Islanders are playing better. They, they are the better team. I didn't think that going in. I really thought Florida was would be able to do stuff. I was one of the few that believed Barboski would actually step it up, although he did play well last game. So there's still hope there. There's still hope. Uh, I won't be betting aside because I do have the series going, but this will be the third game in a row that I will go with the over five. Because like I say, I figure that's the way Florida has to win. Carmine was even talking about it the other day where uh, Florida scores back to back. And what did they do in that third period the other day? Boom, back to back 3-1. So when you're on 3-1, you can get an empty net or 3-2. And uh, I think we talked about it yesterday where uh, Little Luck should have had that over. So we've went over five the last two games we're going to go over five this game we've got a win and a push and we're going to get a win today because i'm hoping florida can win this game but i'm not going to bet it, it seems like really with these five totals we're either seeing a win or a push uh, exactly. in the playoffs and mm-hmm. you know that five and a half hook means a hell of a lot you know when you're talking about fives versus the five and a halves and elimination game as well tends to mean late goals and uh, I'm going to get into that theory a little bit later on into the show. Dave Koken, what are you thinking here in this game? Is, uh, is New York going to take it, or are we going to one more game? I- I'm thinking as little as possible about this game because <laughs> the Florida Panthers, uh, of all the teams in the league, they might be the toughest team, at least for me, to figure out. There's a lot of talent in this team, uh, but they are not an intel- they're not a high IQ hockey team. Let's put it that way. The Islanders. The Islanders don't have a lot of talent, in my opinion, but they are a smart team. Bobrovsky is erratic as can be. Um, he's very tough to predict. When he's on, as he was in the last game, Panthers can yeah, they can beat anybody. Uh, when he's not, which is frequent enough, he's he's become very inconsistent. He's not the goalie he used to be. Uh, they, they, he'll let in a bad goal at some point. And in a playoff game, that's a disaster. I don't know what to do with it. I mean... Uh, if I if I just go by my numbers, uh, I, I I'd have to take the Panthers, but my numbers are, are just not consistently good when it comes to Florida because they they're a team that does not fit any particular type of profile for me. So I mean, my gut says Islanders, my numbers say Florida. That's an easy pass for me. I'm staying as far away from this game as possible. I mean, there's six games out here, and if I were to rank them in order of one to six in preference, this would be seven. <laughs> wow. Well, you know, here, here's where I'm going here, guys. And I think I, I believe I had a play. I did. I, have a, I had a small 2% play uh, that was the exact same as this one in the other elimination game. Um, and I'm going to go back to it again simply because of the price and simply because I had the Islanders as a 5% series bet with my clients. And I think they'll close things out here uh, today. I'm on them minus one and a half goals at plus 210 is the number that I got it in because number one, this team will not win the game without getting an empty net goal or without winning by margin. I'll be shocked to see this team win by one. I mean, we saw yesterday in the Winnipeg-Calgary series, I cashed an over in the third period with two empty netters. I mean, we didn't even need a goalie in the net for me to cash that over. Or, uh, you know, if that was a puck line situation, it wasn't. But uh, you guys get where I'm coming from. Coming from. Yeah. So, you know, right, the definitely. plus 200 number is is one of those things where – you look at it and you say, okay, you know what? It's a 2-1, it's a 2-1 series here. Um, we're getting the same odds. We've pretty much been getting the entire playoffs. Why don't you just go ahead and get plus 200? If you're not willing to do that because it might go to overtime or it, it might be a tight one down to the wire, maybe do a half and half, a minus one. But, uh, you know, I think it's way, way worth it to get that way better number. And I'm going to get more into that plus money value a little bit later on into the show. Uh, once again, a quick shout out to uh, Carmine Bianco. You can also find him at wagertalk.com. He's in the, the producing studio right now in Skype. Carmine has plays and action up uh, at wagertalk.com as well. Uh, we'll, we'll move on here, guys. Uh, next game up uh, that we'll get into Nashville, Arizona. I think that, uh, you know, for myself personally, I had a lean towards Arizona at the start of the series, but it wasn't a strong enough one uh, to pull any triggers. I have a feeling this one goes as long as it can go. I'll throw it to you here first uh, this time around, Dave. I think Arizona might be starting to get into Nashville's head. Yeah. Um, I think the mental game at this point is being won by the Coyotes. They're not, and this, the, it, Nashville is another team that on paper, if you just look at the talent on paper, you say this is a team that should be going deep into the playoffs. And yet, 
We saw last year they didn't. And I have a feeling the same thing's going to happen here. I I suspect that Arizona, despite the fact that they've been, if you just look at the territorial advantages in this series, I mean, Nashville, Nashville probably should have wrapped the series up. Uh, but it's 2-1 the other way. And, and I, I think... Uh, I think Nashville's in trouble. Um, the Coyotes started to take things over in this last game, and they were, I, I think, by a substantial margin, the better team in the second half of that game. Uh, I think the confidence is building for this team. This is a franchise that has had, they've been so snake bitten for so long, but it kind of looks like they're shedding that that uh, that image, and it's it's been an, un, unfortunately for them a rightful image. Um, and let, we'll go back to something I pointed out at the beginning of the series, which is not a revelation on my part. It's just a fact that anybody can see is Arizona has no home ice advantage uh, of, of the all the teams, in the NHL. You can make an argument that theirs is one of the two or three least uh, impactful home vi- home ices because they don't sell a lot of tickets when they do sell a lot of tickets. It's fans from other teams making the trip. I know when Vegas plays there, it's more Vegas Golden Knight fans than than Coyote fans. So for them, playing on the road is no big deal. And if you look at their records, they've been a better road team than home team. Uh, Nashville is a team that really feeds off their, uh, their their tremendous fan base. So I think a neutral ice uh, surface like this actually favors the Coyotes, and I think it might be having an effect in this series. I think the wrong team, I, I, I got to tell you, I think the wrong team's favored here. I think Arizona's going to win this game. I think the bookmakers haven't been adjusting to what they've been seeing or what we've been seeing. I mean... The odds have just been like acting like nothing's really happened or nothing's really changed. You know, look at this right now. This is a team. If you look at it, I kind of compare Buster to the Columbus Blue Jackets in the sense that, you know, unlike the Maple Leafs, they don't have those huge names. You know, they obviously they have Taylor Hall. Uh, Connor Garland is a player that I saw uh, play here in, in Nova Scotia, actually, in the East Coast. A player that's, you know, I think, what, like five foot six? It's, you know, it seemed like he's so small out there. Finds a way to get the job done. You got Christian Dvorak. Obviously, Taylor Hall's a big name, but so many guys that might not jump off the paper, jump jump off the page to you. And look at Columbus, Boone Jenner, even Felino, Pierre Luc Dubois. Pierre Luc Dubois is great, but nobody is getting super excited about him. You know, we're not hearing everyone talk about him on this show, on any other show. So I think that's to an advantage because in the playoffs, you don't need one all star. You need a bunch of guys that can contribute. What are you thinking here today, Buster? Uh, for this game, well, as I said uh, a couple of days ago, I am on Nashville for this series. So I will. I have a small play on Nashville because it went down to minus 130. So I think Dave's uh, pointing in the right direction where I think you're going to see uh, more Arizona money coming in on this. Um, Nashville, there's no doubt. They, uh, they have the better talent. They've uh, they've looked good. They've uh, the problem is, and I said last game when I was worried about uh, not, and I didn't take take the game last game because I said how Arizona scored those late goals, and those late yeah. goals sometimes bring momentum, right? And uh, sure enough, Arizona hung around in that last game, and next, and it is it's a mental thing. We've seen it with the Penguins, and we saw it last night with the Leafs. It's all it's this game is so mental, and like I I I went back to saying. These guys are in a bubble. You don't know what's going on there between the the superstars that are making, you know, the tens of millions to the guys that are making, you know, the millions, right? They're all they're all basically millionaires, I guess, at the <laughs> point. But there's it's a whole dip, a different atmosphere, and I think Arizona's playing as a team, and I, and I'm going to probably harp on this in the next four or five games. Playoffs is a team. Playoffs is. Who wants it more? And as Dave said, Arizona looks like they want it more. I'm hoping that Nashville wakes up, the talent comes. I'd like to see Soros play a little bit better. I know Kemper can, you know, he played well the last game, obviously. I know he can play uh, not as well. I'm looking for Nashville. I've just got a small play out for my clients on Nashville today uh, because I'm I'm loaded up on them on this series. And I just, I'm going to add one more point with Dave said and the reason why I took Nashville for the cup and all that I agree with what Dave was talking about Nashville is has so much talent they look so good they're one of the better teams five on five and yeah. the thing that the thing that killed them this year is their 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 power play was terrible their penalty kill was terrible same as last year yeah they had so about the worst I think their power play was the worst in the league last year 
you think somewhere along the line they would get that with that kind of talent, but for they just don't. But like I say, I'm all in with Nashville, like I said the last time, and I'm all in with them today. I'm not betting the game, but I've got series money, and uh, I will look for them for the talent to go over the team in this game, but not in any other game I'm going to bet today. I've had a beef with Nashville since about three years ago when I made a future bet on them, <laughs> and I haven't really gone back since. So it's not good to hold grudges, but I feel like it may be a good thing with this team. I got to say something uh, real so, quick about Sorry, sorry uh, um, Andrew, let me just say, believe me, after the, if, when they get beat out, if they do get beat out mm-hmm. against Arizona, I'm going to have a huge grudge against this team. <laughs> it happens to all of us. It happens to all of us. I got to say, guys, one player that, you know, I'm not attacking this guy personally, but as a hockey player, it seems that no matter where he goes, Ottawa, Columbus, Nashville, you guys know who I'm talking about, does not perform and seems, I don't know what it is, seems like a great, great person off the ice. Where is Matt Duchesne? We have to literally get our binoculars out, our telescope, and try and find this guy because I can't see him on the ice doing anything. I mean, Dave, you guys talk about the talent of this team and how strong they really are. I'm not seeing it because, you know, it is only so I, I, long. I think at some point it's got to sink in that we're overrating them. Yeah, well, I yeah, mean, I think at some point it has to right. sink in that we're overrating the, world, the, the world of, too, right? The world, the world of regular. You yes. can be a regular okay. season team, and then right. you can be a playoff team. And where are the goals coming in the playoffs? Yeah. They haven't been oh. that good in the regular season the last two years either. Well, good enough to make the playoffs, I'm yeah, saying. Look, well, yeah, but I mean, half the team, half the league makes the playoffs, even in a normal season. Um, you know, they, they had to fire. Well, they're not coming in as the eighth seed. Oh, hey, I'm not, you know, I'm not a big Heinz guy. What has he ever done yeah, as a head coach? Yeah, yeah um, exactly, yeah. Maybe that's what they need. Maybe they need to go get somebody that's a little bit more quality for sure. So, something's, something's not right there, you know. And But I'm going to have faith that the, maybe they can get together as a team and say, okay, let's let's go. We've been playing very well. Let's, you know, we can beat this team. So In a way, I hope they do because I don't have a series bet. And uh, I, I, I can tell you this. They get through this series. I'm lining up against them next series. Yeah, me too, <laughs> Dave. <laughs> well, I, I hope they win this one so I can bet Arizona in the last game. I'm going even earlier than that, Dave. We'll go to the next game here, guys. Uh, I think probably the most important game of the day uh, for obvious reasons here. I'm a Canadian fan, of course. I have to have a little bias here, Dave. Um, Look, I'm I'm just going to get my two cents in. I might have a little bit of response back to what you guys had to say. But number one, Tristan Jari enters the series. He has been announced as the starter for the Pittsburgh Penguins. Will this be a difference maker? Look. That one goal Jeff Petrie scored, outstanding, you know, nice, picks the pocket. However, I will say, if you guys have noticed in this series, Matt Murray just, he just slides out of his crease. He's a huge, massive body. And I've been saying this for a little while, and I think a lot of people uh, don't really understand what I'm saying. I think Matt Murray's overrated. But you can't say somebody's overrated when they have two Stanley Cup rings. He was a better goalie then than he's been. This season, yeah. I, you know, I'm not knocking the Penguins. Uh, the coach is he's sharper than I am. Uh, but uh, I thought Jury should have been the starter in the series, to be honest with you. I thought he was the better performer in the regular season. And that's that tends to be what I go with as far as that goes. So Dave, here, here's the issue, though. You, it's hard for someone to just enter a game. I know saw Elvis Merz Lickens do it, you know, literally during an actual game. But even during a series, it's like, hey, go ahead here, Tristan. Come out here in an elimination game, and if you don't win, you didn't do your job. You know, and and I think there's no pressure on him, guys, because you know who the pressure's on? Evgeny Malkin, Jake Gensel, guys like that to 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 get something done. So I'll throw it to you here first, Buster, the Montreal Canadiens fan, for uh for some honest thoughts here, non biased thoughts on this game. Well, you know that's not gonna happen, but uh <laughs> since we since we have uh, three more uh games to go. I, I'll keep it brief like I talked about last game. Pittsburgh, by far, they got the better talent. Montreal is more of a team. And you saw it the other night when they came back and you saw that Pittsburgh Penguin bench with all those superstars sulking, just sulking over there. And 
it's amazing how like when when they got beat, like when they when they got tied up, you could almost see that Montreal was going to win, even though Pittsburgh is you know they have so many good superstars. Who just I I don't get it because Sullivan's a great coach. I I don't I don't know why why they fell apart that game. I was shocked, even though I bragged about it. I was shocked. What has to happen again for Montreal? Out of the penalty box. Pittsburgh got two power play goals last game. Stay out of the penalty box. Play that effort like they played. Don't go back to that game two where they look like crap. Carey Price needs to grab one of these two games and Montreal wins. Again, do not, do not, and I repeat, do not lay 170 with this club, Pittsburgh. You might win both of your next two bets, but that's just bad gambling. And I'll leave it at that. Let's go Habs. Happy 33rd birthday to Sidney Crosby. Uh, I think the Penguins will win. I am unwilling to lay this kind of a price to find out if I'm right. Next. All right. On to the next game. I'll uh, I'll be wearing this jersey for the next 24 hours. Hopefully it's for a good reason. Not a bad one. Edmonton Oilers, Chicago Blackhawks. What a collapse that was in the uh, the latter half of that game. I mean, I just couldn't believe it. Uh, just It was unbelievable for me. I've mentioned to you and I've mentioned on Twitter that I've been uh, I've been grabbing teams to win in regulation during the games. So I've been betting live bets on teams to win in regulation during the game. Uh, I believe I had the Oilers around plus 140, plus 160 maybe when they were down. And it was to win in regulation, and they absolutely collapsed, throw that one away. Um, so here's one thing that I'll say, and I know we're done with the previous game we mentioned, but uh, I have one friend, diehard Penguins fan, just condescending text guys condescending text to me every single goal every single play that happens says you know man this team is nothing without Carey price this is an embarrassing franchise how am, how is my team losing to them well every single team has their mvp right not just the montreal Canadiens, if i'm not mistaken so everyone can say that we have bad forwards if they want to say that we have an mvp as our goalie the reason i bring that up in the last victory the Edmonton Oilers had, who had a hat trick for the Edmonton Oilers? Does he have to have a hat trick again for them to be successful and win a game? Because I thought they started to get some depth on their team. And it seems like the depth is way more favoring the Chicago Blackhawks, Dave. Well, the Blackhawks have, they've got Stanley Cup tested guys. Exactly. Uh, and they've got no pressure. You know, Taze looks like he's, Rediscovered the fountain of youth in this series. Kane is Kane. The, you know Crawford hasn't been great by any means, but he's but he's you know he's hung in there. Let me put it this way: he hasn't been any worse than the Edmonton goalies. I, I think Edmonton is still going to regret Smith in Game One, which you know put them in a hole to begin with and gave them life in this series. Edmonton's supposed to win, but we're now at the point in this series where supposed to win doesn't mean they will. Uh, this is a no bet for me. The only thing I'd consider, <laughs> and why not, the over. Neither goal, neither goalie uh, is is uh, a brick wall at this point, and the offenses are, are dominating. And listen, I I don't see where there's not going to be another game with seven or eight up there. I can't I can't talk anybody off betting the over in this game. You've been cashing tickets. You might do it again. Buster, what are you thinking here? Well, whatever he's thinking, it's it's deep thought. Yeah, oh, there I, uh, he is. Okay, you you. I thought you were meditating. Oh, he can play. Uh, I like Chicago again. With that? No, you froze for a second, and I thought you were in meditation. Either that, or it oh. gone into a catatonic state. <laughs> Don't worry Sorry, about I didn't it. Know I, fro- I didn't know I froze. Obviously, uh, yeah. So I'm not sure what what part uh, I got out there. But a- anyways, as far as far as that goes, uh, I'm going to be taking Chicago. Uh, again, it's plus money. I'm not laying any kind of. Well, I don't. I don't really want to lay any money with Edmonton, anyways, because uh, Chicago looks like they're the better team right now. Bottom line. So, give me the Hawks plus money again. I had them the other night. I'll take them again tonight. Well, you know, we've seen bounce back spots, and uh, I think we saw it uh, the last time around with the Edmonton Oilers. We saw a bounce back. So. Uh, will they do it again? Will they bounce back? Here's the angle I'm going. We keep on talking about plus money. I'm grabbing the Edmonton Oilers, not just on the money line in the first period, minus a half goal in the first period uh, at a pretty great plus 170 price here. If they do not win the first period, they do not win this game. 
Uh, they are not a team that can come back in games. They've proven that. And it seems like on a large scale, they do a pretty good job of scoring first against pretty well anybody. And uh, I'm turning a, you know, not a bad price into a pretty great price with plus 170 for this team to win the first period. Not tie it, but win the first period. Uh, we'll move on here to Toronto, Columbus. Boy, do I wish Prez was here. <laughs> Boy, do I wish Prez was here on this show right now. <laughs> Did I? Listen, that would make I, my day. I made probably the best prediction I've made all year in yesterday's game. Uh, doing yesterday's show, we were talking about Muzzin being out uh, for Toronto, which was a big loss because he's really their best stay-at-home defenseman. And I actually made the comment that I thought Morgan Riley would get caught up ice at some point uh, you, you can play that. I don't have the exact wording, but I, I, I said Morgan Riley would, would be yeah, a goal on a goal. And sure enough, guess who gets caught in the overtime? You cannot do that if you're a defenseman in an overtime. You cannot get caught up ice and allow an odd man break. And Morgan Riley, who's a really talented guy, and I know he's one of the team leaders, but he just thinks offense too often, and that's the Maple Leafs in microcosm. They just sure don't is. pay attention to defense. They don't pay attention to defense. And it's going to get him in this series. I think Columbus is going to knock him out. But Dave, you knock Morgan Riley, which you, you did mention, I remember, on yesterday's show, which yeah, he, he was did. the person that was up. However, how about the man making $11 million that was the one that turned the puck over? How yeah, about no, but, but, but turnovers are going to happen. You can't yeah. get – I'm sorry. If you're a defenseman, you cannot get caught uh, and let a forward get behind you like that. It's, I mean, it's, you saw the play unfold. It's like where the – uh, where the hell is Riley? I was going to use another word, but I, I've, been keeping, I've, been keeping it, I've been keeping it. I've been keeping it clean. Uh, <laughs> and sure enough, I mean, there he is, two steps behind the guy. You can't do that because you have to assume that you're going to get. Uh, if you're in overtime, if you're a defenseman, you have to assume that somebody up front is going to turn the puck over. Just assume it. Play defense. Play defense first. Don't make the mistake that gives the other team a breakaway. And that's what. That's what happened, and it turns into a two-on-one game over, and maybe series over, because Tortorella is, he's just, I am, look, Keith might be a great coach down the road, but he's a rookie coach, and he's up against the best here. There's, the Torts and, and Trotz are probably the two best coaches in the league, and, uh, and it's showing in this series. Uh, great. Say, that was a great move yesterday. To, uh, I mean, Corpusal has been terrific, mm-hmm. but that was a great move to fire up his team, get him excited. And Merzlikens is talented as well. I guess Torts has to make a decision as to who goes here. Uh, but either way, I think Columbus is in pretty good shape in this series. Before I throw it to you, Buster, I'm going to say two things about Sheldon Keefe. Number one is that he doesn't want anybody on his team chipping the puck in, dumping and chasing it. He wants everyone carrying it in. Sometimes that does not work in the playoffs. It, it's supposed to work for this Maple Leafs team with the talent that they have. But they're too worried about getting, going backwards, circling around, and then carrying the puck in which hasn't seemed to work. Number two about Sheldon Keefe, like Dave mentioned, he's a good coach and stuff, but here's the funny thing. Mike Babcock, he got some flack for actually playing his top line too little, for barely even playing his top line and playing his third and fourth liners a lot during the playoffs. I think they need to be out there the most, you know, not not like the most, but more during this because... In the playoffs, yeah. Mitch, Mitch Marner and those guys, very, very talented. They are scared to get hit. They are scared of their own shadows. They are scared of a protein shake. They do not want to go out there in front of the net and score a goal two feet into the, next to the net. I mean, Nylander scored one, uh, but you cannot score if you're not going to go into the dirty areas. Look at guys like Boone Jenner and Dubois. They're massive, massive guys, Buster, that are willing to go to those areas. How about uh, that play where Jenner, Jenner took uh, Matthews right off that puck and went in, went in if, if he had a little <laughs> bit more time, you know? There's no doubt. Uh, Toronto, lots of guys, that uh, lots of talent. But, you know, I, I've sat here for this is my third day harping. Um, you win playoff hockey by being the tougher team. Team, team, team. And you saw what happened again, just like with Pittsburgh. When uh, Toronto got caught, all of a sudden Columbus took that game over. It was just a matter of time when, you know, Columbus won that game. They should have probably won it in regulation. They were just the better team from that point. Once it got to 3-3, that was it. And um, and I, I said, I, I do these videos because I'm in quarantine for 14 days. So I've been doing 14 days of videos, right? So on my day two video, 
All I mentioned was the main thing that you have to worry about in NHL hockey, one of the top things, and Dave touched on it, and I've been touching on it all the time, is coaching. Coaching will do it. Coaching and team and torts is one of the best. And what happened with Toronto uh, yesterday, and now you got to come back less than 24 hours. Geez, I, I, I don't know mentally if they're going to be um, good, prepared I, for this. Listen, we saw a great team last year in Tampa blow a 3 nothing lead in game one to the mm-hmm. Columbus Blue Jackets, and they were never heard from again. Toronto is not as good as that Tampa was, and they just blew a 3 nothing lead, and they don't even get a day off. Um, I mean, situational advantage is, is with the Blue Jackets here. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you I'll, one thing, guys. We sure. saw five games yesterday on the card. Every single one of those games cashed the live third period over. Uh, when I'm around, and I mostly am at, at home watching these games, I'm looking at in-game betting totals in the NHL and the National Hockey League. The bookmakers, they, they don't adjust to what the third period means. Third period means intensity. It means an empty net goal a lot of the time. It means a goalie pulled. So possibly another goal for the the team with the goalie pulled. And we saw it countless times. And I think that, you know, we're seeing once again, yeah. a five and a half as the total here in an elimination game. We can talk about Columbus Blue Jackets hockey. We can talk about how they play. But the Toronto Maple Leafs, I said this for the past six months on this show. They will not win a hockey game without scoring at minimum three goals. Yeah. You know, By the way, if you, you want to, if you like the Maple Leafs here, and I'm not, I, I don't like the Maple Leafs here, but for anybody who does, I would go first period rather than full game. Because yeah. if they don't win the first period, I think they're dead ducks. Also, I uh, cashed on uh, Pierre Luc Dubois to score any time. Nice. He scored uh, three goals, had him plus 250 here on puck time yesterday. I'm going to give out uh, two. One is going to be Nick Felino plus 400. Uh, somebody that I'm giving out. And number two, Zach Wierenski, plus 320. Two anytime goal scorers for me. Nick Foligno, plus 400. Wierenski, plus 320. Uh, as far as plays goes, guys, uh, we're kind of spending a lot of time on this game because it's fun to crap on the Leafs. But uh, <laughs> honestly, though, you guys, it sounds like, obviously, Dave, you like Columbus, but have you made a play on it? I like no, the over uh, in this uh, game. No, I, I, I haven't yet. I'm still considering it. Um, but I haven't yet. Uh I'd like to see the, some Maple Leafs money come in and push the line up a little bit. <laughs> what about you, Buster? Are you pulling the trigger? I was gonna, Dave must have been reading my mind. That's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm figuring that all the Leafs money will come in. And like I've been telling everybody, do not, do not, do not. And all it's like a broken record. Do not lay these 150s, 160s with teams that don't even look the better club. So uh, not. I don't know if I will bet Columbus today. I think I might just sit and enjoy the game. But I just want to mention one thing that uh, was brought up probably great. I don't know if you guys brought it up at all. But um, just remember, going back, 82% of the Game 1 winners win these series. Now, yeah. I know it's I know it's back in the you know, 80s and, like I say, way back before, uh, you know, before you were around, Andrew. But I'm just, just, to, just to say, just keep that in mind. You've already had two that cash at that eighty-two percent. So just keep that in mind. And uh, Columbus is going to win this series. I don't know if they win it today, but they're going to win this series. I, th- I think they do win it today, only because the mental aspect of it. Those guys having to live in a bubble. It's not like they could go home and get you know talk to their wives or talk to you know like you just yeah, get away thing, from it. They can't the get thing, away from it. Right? The best thing they can't get Leafs, away from it. The best thing that could have happened for the Maple Leafs was just go out and get drunk someplace after the game last night. They'd be better off today, but uh, you can't even do that. No. So yeah, yesterday during the game, and I say this not to mention because I tweeted out a, a winner that I had. I had the Columbus Blue Jackets to win the game in the first overtime, and it was plus one sixty. So I'm saying this right now because people are scared to bet regulation bets. They're scared to bet single period bets, but the value you're going to get is a hell of a lot better. I'm telling you right now, if you like the Columbus Blue Jackets to win, and uh, Dave Buster, I'm not sure if you agree with me, but I think they'll win the game in regulation. You know, I think I'm not going to predict an overtime. You can get plus 200 on them to win in regulation. You know, the, the, the line nice. is plus 120 for them to win the game and plus 200 for them to win in regulation. The number on that, the difference to me, makes it completely worth my while 
and uh, definitely boost me. I think if Columbus wins, they don't just win. Uh, they dominate this game. What do you guys think about that? Uh, for, for myself, yeah, that, that, that is a good play. I uh, I actually wrote my, – my problem with betting those games in regulation is that – you know, I've been, unfortunately, uh, Andrew, I've been around a long time and I see a lot of these hockey games when two teams like this, they tend to play a lot of overtimes. I actually did in my write-up when I gave out Columbus plus 130 yesterday to my uh, clients. I told them, hey, be prepared. This can be a close game. Might even go to overtime, but I want plus 130 on a coin flip game. And I said that yesterday on this show. So uh, I think that's an excellent play. Uh, plus 200. I just don't gamble. I just don't bet that way. That's all. I would. I, I will take the 130 if I bet it. I probably will. Like I said, I'll probably sit and watch and watch Columbus win. <laughs> don't you? Don't have to bet every game, guys. Remember, no, that. no, that's for sure. <laughs> I'll throw it to you here, Dave. Vancouver looked pretty sharp in their yeah, last game. Yeah, uh, I know that you've liked Minnesota moving uh, with the series. Will they uh, get right. their act back together and uh, you know get things going again? I'm glad I didn't bet this. Uh, I haven't made a bet in this series, which uh, irritated me a bit after game one because Minnesota did win that game. And it's like, ah, damn it, I should have backed it up. But I saved money the last two games. I still think Minnesota matches up well with Vancouver, but it's it's becoming more of a Vancouver series. They've got a lot of momentum on their side. Um, I, I don't know. I, at this point, I, you know, you can try and sound like an expert, but I think people can tell when you're faking it. And if I tried to uh, say anything of value in this game, I think people would spot right off the bat that I'm faking it. So I'll just keep quiet and listen to somebody else because I don't really have a good feel for this series. Look, I sound like a broken record, but uh, I'm going to say it here, and this is a, the perfect one. I think it's even better than the Leafs game to wait till that total drops, then get on the over. We're going to see some goals in this one. It might not be early because we're going to see some hesitancy. But I think later in the game, the puck will start going in the net. Buster, anything from you here in this matchup? Vancouver taking on Minnesota. Uh, as I said yesterday, I did take uh, Minnesota in the ser- in the series. And uh, I have been very disappointed. It does look like Vancouver has taken over the series. Uh, again, I will because I have bet Minnesota in this series, I probably will not make a play. I do like the game over as well, Andrew, only because Minnesota has to play a little bit of different type of hockey, right? They can't just play what they've been playing. Even when they won that first game, you know, they uh, to win that 3 nothing 3 nothing game, they looked really good, shut Vancouver down and everything. Hasn't been really working too well the last couple of games, so um, I will probably go on the over. Hopefully it will come down to five. That's probably the top of these fives. So we'll... Uh, We'll, we'll go on that, and uh, I will get my series back going. So, yeah, I'm not, not going to be betting anything else. The, the under is now really juiced. Five and a half under minus 135. So, wow. Uh, so, I, you know, there should be some fives showing. Yes, yeah, there will be by the yeah, – yeah. Well, guys, it is Friday. We hope uh, – I hope all of you guys, Carmine, Dave, Buster, you have a great weekend and uh, great luck with all your wagers. All of our viewers, thank you very much for tuning in to Wager Talk TV. You can catch Dave and I uh, on first pitch Monday through Friday at 2 p.m. Eastern. Um, We would talk about some of tomorrow's games, but unfortunately, I think the Montreal game will be canceled because it won't need to happen. Uh, so, So we'll get into that and we'll talk about all that stuff on Monday. This is Puck Time. You can find us right here on Wager Talk TV, 11 a.m. Eastern. For Carmine, for Dave, for Buster, thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you on today. Good luck.